I, I have projects waiting to paint. I can't do anything. Mm. Literally open the paint and there was ice. Like a, like we're poking through ice. Just got to wait. I had to tell a client, you got to hold off. He's hmm. okay with it. Yep. So do you have any kind of like big heating lamps or anything in your shop that you can use to heat a small area? Like if you were painting? Yeah, we have what's called the Dynaglow heaters. They're from Home Depot. I went there and I could have bought one for like 600 a huge one, or two smaller ones for the same price. So I bought the two smaller ones to point into opposite directions, or I guess from either side of the room toward the middle. And they make it tolerable. I mean, yesterday, I was really focused. I had a lot of work to do yesterday. And it was Sunday yesterday, but I had a lot of work to finish because today I have to make a delivery. And I just was in there focused, working the entire time. And it was funny. At one point, I got in my car to go get a coffee, and I turned it on, and it was six degrees. I I totally didn't realize it was six degrees. And I guess because the wind had died down. So it wasn't noticeable. It was just cold. It wasn't like constantly pushing. And my little shop, my warehouse shop is, it's not little, but it's my warehouse shop is, used to be a delivery center for wood for sloppy drivers. And so every wall's got holes poked in it. So when the wind blows, it, the bottom of every wall is like pushed off of its mooring. And so the steel columns and in between every six or eight feet, the, the floor is pushed open. So you can like feel the wind blow right up underneath the floor. And I don't own the building, so I'm not about to start fixing all that. And I took I took the building as is. So anyway, so once a, if this is the worst that it's going to be, I'll be fine. I just can't paint. And some of the chemicals are freezing. But I'm taking my glue home at night, my wood glue. I'm bringing it home at night. In fact, my laser broke in this weather. The laser, Dave, that you gave me, I opened it up a couple weeks ago, and the laser tube was shattered. And there was no water in it. But I think the water vapor might have froze. I, I really don't know exactly. There was no water in it. I, you know, I took the pump off and everything. But maybe there was water vapor in the, you know, the residual, and maybe that's what cracked the tube. Anyway, so I called Full Spectrum, and oh, I wrote them an email. I was like, how can I buy a new tube, or do you want to sponsor me? And they wrote back. They're like, hey, we'll send you a new laser. Yeah, so I got the Muse now. That's why I've been playing with it on Instagram. Now, with the Muse, I was here the other day. <laughs> you guys are going to laugh. I couldn't get it to work. It wasn't. I'm like, look, I have experience with this thing. I've used the one, the other one, and it's not firing. The whole time, I'm testing and I'm testing and I'm testing. Can you guess what I wasn't doing? Did you plug it in? I did that, believe it or not, but that's <laughs> as stupid as the thing I wasn't doing. I didn't close the lid. He's like, he's like, send me a video of what's wrong. So he's, I'm like, the laser is not firing. I know these machines. I know what I'm doing. I sent him the video, and I'm watching the video. I send the email. I make sure the video goes through, and I'm watching the video. I'm watching the video. I'm like... I'm a moron. I didn't close the lid. It actually works, but it just won't fire. So you can have like a test run to see uh, where your laser is going to go. Huh. Anyway, so I wrote to him and I apologized and I said, it works now. Duh. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> Doy. But that was like two phone calls with the service. I had previous phone calls for other other reasons. But it was like, hey, it's me again. What's wrong now? It was like that kind of it was like the fifth phone call. Anyway, it works now, and I, and I really am having a lot of fun with it. That's pretty crazy that that uh, tube would shatter in the cold. It makes sense, I suppose. I just hadn't really thought about I wonder if there are any other tools like that that just cannot handle temperature fluctuation. Yeah, I, like I said, the only thing I could think of is that there was a little water in there, and if even though the water is not enough to press against the sides of it, maybe the vapor was enough like to expand and contract inside. I don't know. If anybody knows, you could let me know. Uh, just the end broke off, kind of like where the connections are for the water things. It didn't, I mean, it's broken. There's no use, there's no using it, but it didn't, the whole thing didn't shatter. It just kind of popped off the end, like a couple of little pieces broke. Like when you see neon, and you're like, oh my God, that looks really cool, but it's got like a crack in it. You're like, it's completely useless. So, well, you know, it's funny. I, so I, I had another job this week with the CNC, uh, the shop bot. And it was stuttering and stamp, and it was like two degrees out. And my shop was, you know, my shop was five degrees outside. It was two degrees, and so it's stuttering and stammering. And the thing is, I'm trying to zero it, and it's going da And so I called Shopbot. I said, "So the machine is acting weird. Now I need to know: is it the computer or is it the machine?" And he goes, "No, the it can't be the machine. We have guys that do CNC into ice." inside a freezer box they cnc ice for uh you know sculptural ice so i was like okay so it must be my machine so i went and i have, I have two i have a thinkpad and i have like an old beat up windows computer so i was using the beat up computer so i put on the thinkpad and it worked perfect so once he told me that i knew I, you know my troubleshooting was 
it was easy. So I got the uh, the newer ThinkPad, and it works perfect in two degree weather. But my my other machine, I have to engrave ice picks, and my uh, my Tormach is acting super weird in the super cold. So I'm just waiting for it to warm up before I go try it again before I call up technical support. But I think it's just the cold because I can imagine there's grease and the uh, the cutting fluid is mixed with water, so the cutting fluid is frozen. Oh. Yeah. Huh. So cold is a real pain in the butt. Yeah. Well, it's almost over though. <laughs> is it? <laughs> I think it's just getting started. <laughs> Pretty sure we still got a little ways to go. Well. It was funny, since we're talking about cold forever and ever, I um, we got the kids a basketball goal for Christmas. And so I have been, like, I put part of it together last week, and it was too cold to be outside, so I came back in. Yesterday I went out to finish it, and it's one of those that's movable, so the base is like a big plastic tub, you know, and you fill it with sand or with water to weight it down so it'll stand up. So I get the whole thing put together. They're all out there, like, standing there with the basketballs waiting for me to stand the thing up. And I'm like, all right, we got to fill it up with water. So I take the hose, stick it in there, go up, turn on the hose, nothing. And water's coming out, like, at where the hose connection to the bib is. And I realized that there was water left in the hose that was frozen. So it was just like a frozen snake there blocking all the water. Um, So we we couldn't do that. (laughs) Just kind of a dumb thing, you know. I didn't even think about that. but So I moved it out to the sun to let it melt. Anyway, we've been like old men complaining about the cold for 10 minutes. <laughs> no, but, you know, like I said, the cold has been a pain in the butt, but it obviously garnished me a, a cool new laser. So, yeah, thank uh, you, Full Spectrum. That's kind of interesting. Thank you, cold. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, cold. Well, what else is going on? You guys been doing anything cool? Well, no. Uh, huh. I, I have. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to work on this week. I have a bunch of shop par- furniture projects, but I'm not inspired by doing those types of projects. And so I'm thinking about getting away f- from that and doing something fun and quick, cr- and crafty maybe. And I don't know what that's going to be yet. But is is there something know. about those shop projects that you could add to make them like unique or different or you know, dual purpose or something like that to make them more inspiring. We mm. we, we can brainstorm if you want. <laughs> we we, cer- we certainly can. Um, I don't know. I just I you know I'm working on uh, the bench and I added some things to that and it's cool when it's done. But I don't like building benches and I need to build some tool stands. I just uh, I don't know. They're just it, it's just not as. Unless I'm making it out of walnut, I'm not really inspired. By. <laughs> uh, I yeah, hate making I, shop furniture. I mean, yeah, if you, you just, notice I never really f- do it. And all the stuff in my shop is just on the floor. Yeah. Lately, I got into making these steel tables, and I really like making these steel tables. And now now my, my assistant, we have a young assistant in the shop named Brandon, and he's 19, and he graduated high school with a welding certificate. And so Brandon's been doing a lot of the welding in and around the shop. So uh, he's he made the last two tables. I just kind of art directed him, and he did a really good job. So if I need to make any more of those, which I will in time, he'll make them. This also gives him some some technical practice on welding up these. But I got these tables down to so, sort of a science where we put rollers on them, and they become little job tables around the shop. So mm-hmm. we need them for the printing press. Next to you, you need like a bunch of stuff. You know, and any given task always needs extra stuff. I like them too because. I make the tables there two two foot by four foot by thirty six inches high on wheels, and then right next to my my work table, I pile all my stuff on it, like screw guns, screws, any hand tools. They all get piled on that, and then if I need it somewhere else, I just push it over to the other section, and mm. I, I'm able to keep my four by eight assembly table free and clear. <sighs> so, I had an yeah. interesting job this week. That's why I needed to CNC a lot. I at one point, I, I was CNCing on Instagram, and I was asking people uh, if you can guess what I was making. There's no way in a million years anybody would guess. But did you guys see I had the little rubber hands, like, cleaning off the uh, yeah. material? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that was the, my little shop hands. The, uh, so what I made is a sign for, ki- the, you know, the rock band, The Killers? Yeah. Yeah. So I made a, ro- I made a sign for The Killers, because they're playing at the Barclay Center tomorrow night. And the I'm in this, like program where it's called the green room gift program at barclay center and they write to me alana's my connection there she says 
the killers are coming. You got any ideas? And so I'll sketch up some ideas and I'm like, I could make each one of these, each one of the guys like a little handheld version of this. Or she's like, oh, that's really cool. Make one big one. And so that's what I made this week. I'm looking for pictures to show you guys. I, I won't be able to kind of do any social media on it till after, obviously, which is, but you guys could see this little picture of it. So that's the back. And that's the front coming around. Oh, so it's all, it's all CNC plastic. That's it's cool. Quarter inch uh, acrylic. The whole thing's made out of acrylic. That's their logo. So, and I, I found a hundred like little bitmap versions of it. And I said, I said, Dargo, unless I could find a, a vector version, I can't do this. I'm not going to sit here and make this sign. It's thousands of little circles. And so I was actually able to find a vector version of their logo, resize it and CNC it. And since my CNC is only 24 inches wide, I had to do the whole sign in two sections. But I was able to bury the seam. And it came out really nice. I'm happy with it. So I'm yeah. going to deliver it today after the podcast. I'm going to get my car and drive to Brooklyn. Nice. That looks cool. Thank you. That was a lot of fun. It was a, it was all acrylic, the whole thing, and uh, acrylic glue, and again, working in 5, 10 degree weather. And uh, everything seems to be holding up hmm. as of now. So we'll see. Awesome. So, thank you. Well, I, I didn't put out a video last week like I was talking about last week in... Uh, I started, let's see, when was that? I guess on Thursday when I would have put out that video, instead of spending that day doing comments and stuff, I started two other projects, and it was really cool. I don't know why it was so cool, but, like, it was a super productive Thursday, and I started, like, a 3D modeling and printing project and got really far, and it's, like, a, something that fits with a real-world object, so, you know, it had to be exact. And so I feel like my fusion skill like took a giant leap forward in, mm. in trying to figure out that particular thing. I'm pretty excited about that. And then I started like a, a piece of furniture from my office, which is right here. And it was really cool, man. I made a lot of progress in a very short amount of time. And um, so now I'm working on, I have the video for this week and the next two weeks are almost done. And so that feels awesome. Like it's totally worth taking a week off to be able to, you know, feel productive and start to build a, a log of, content try to get ahead and get some bigger stuff done so pretty cool hmm. and i don't feel hmm. bad at all about not putting out a video last week and that's fantastic that's good hmm. yeah i've been trying to put out more classic duresta style videos if you notice i put out two this week and right away in the comments everyone's like oh classic duresta duresta's back so <laughs> <laughs> and this sign this sign video i was editing because we started 10 minutes late so i went right back into the edit and i just started tweaking and tweaking and tweaking and tweaking it went from 12 minutes and now i'm at nine minutes so this is going to be another classic the rest of the Ooh, video classic yeah mm. so i read a book yesterday mm. called making time by you bob cleggett by me and uh, it was uh i i found it very interesting and it was some some good insight into you and there's something in there that you talked about uh balance versus balancing is that uh, is that yeah. how you phrased it yeah and I, I thought that was really interesting and i wanted to see if we could expand on that a little bit more yeah so the thing that i a lot of people ask me about like work life balance because a lot of people with a family who like to make things have trouble, you know, dedicating the time. Well, I mean, anybody that has a family, <laughs> it has trouble, like, splitting the time and figuring out the balance between doing the thing that you want to do and taking care of the people you need to take care of. And uh, people ask me about it all the time. And it dawned on me at one point that <clears throat> I think people are looking for, all of us are naturally looking for, like, a balance point. Like, when you think about, you know, a pencil on the end of your finger... And you hold it up, and you eventually get it to balance. And it's you can stay, and as long as nothing moves, that will always be balanced, and it'll stay in that position. But I think that's what we try to find, but at least for me, that's totally not the way that my life works. And so I started looking at it more as, instead of trying to find a balance and maintain it, uh, a single Situation like a single percentage of 40% work, 60% family, or 30, 70, or whatever the numbers are, <clears throat> that instead it's a balancing. So you're constantly, you know, like real balancing would be on a unicycle, where you're constantly adjusting for the shift from left to right. You're constantly trying to make sure that this has enough and that has enough. And 
And that sounds kind of exhausting, but it's also a little more realistic, I think. Because I know that, <clears throat> and this is all stuff I say in the book, that um, you know, sometimes my kids really need dad. Sometimes they really need me to pay attention to them and be interested in what they're doing and help them. Sometimes they don't care at all. <laughs> they don't need me <laughs> at all. Um, and it, the same for the business, you know, like, especially now that I have an employee, like Josh is on full time now. I have a salary to cover, which covers his family too. Sometimes the business needs me to be really focused on the business and focused on the content. And sometimes, like when I have three videos in the can waiting to go out, it doesn't need me today. You know, it'll need me tomorrow, but it doesn't need me today. So I think those the the amount of need and the the where I'm needed shifts constantly. And so I can pay attention to one thing and let the other drift a little bit. And then the next day, I'm probably going to have to shift, you know, and pay attention to the other thing. And so that's kind of the way I was looking at that whole maybe it's just semantics, but the difference between balance versus balancing is that I think it's a constant motion. It's a constant, like adjusting to whatever the needs happen to be at any given time. So I think what I found interesting about it was we get asked a lot of, you know, uh, how do I do this uh, for a living or how, how do you handle this? And there's never one good answer because in the, in the, in a content creator world everybody does something a little bit different and that's why there's not a particular formula so uh you phrasing it in in the way of balance versus balancing really kind of struck me as like that makes so much sense you know there's it's it's a constant it's a constant flux of yeah doing one thing versus doing another and so jimmy you don't have a large family at home but you seem to travel quite a bit and Mm -hmm. (laughs) you uh, and you drive and that adds a lot more time so how do you uh, how do you balance making videos versus traveling versus taking on new clients and i i since i started my youtube channel there's only been a couple of clients like for instance make magazine and then and then again uh core 77 where i actually had to hit a mark so I was always very flexible with my own personal schedule. When I started doing the vlogs, they were a little bit easier to throw together and have every Sunday or every Saturday. Now I'm like every 10 days with the vlogs, just because coming up here, it's just somehow everything seems to have gotten busier. But also, I haven't been moving around as much with the vlogs, so I don't have as much. So I'm waiting until hmm. I have better content so I could put together like a good solid 8 to 15 minute video. Sometimes I look at my, because I just dump for the vlog, I just dump it in, you know, right now I'm at 61. So whatever footage I get, any interesting conversations I throw in there and I start looking at it and I'm like, okay, I have enough content here to put together a 10 minute video. Prior to like having like a good anchor story or any good like piece that I could make the cover story, I just wait until I have that. So this year I'm kind of being a little bit more relaxed with the vlog. Um, as far as my own videos, I always just try and put up when I have something good and, you know, sometimes... Like from, I guess if you look at the lull, I mean, aside from the the so-called algorithm change, if you look at my personal lull from me doing the TV show in California till now, I've, everything kind of sloped a little bit because I was big stretches of time where I wasn't posting. And so now this year I'm going to focus on trying to get more videos up. I do have a ton of videos ready to go, not really ready to go, but you know, half baked, half done client work, mostly all client work. And uh, so I'm looking forward to putting a lot of videos up in the next you know short period of time but it's just i work when i can i usually work really late you know sometimes i go to bed with taylor and then when she falls asleep i get out of bed and i come here and edit and then i work until three or four or five in the morning and then go back to bed and wake up i only need about five hours of sleep typically to be okay so i i'm like i said i work late and i get up early and edit a little bit so that's kind of how i balance but for me the most important thing is an absolute deadline this killer's job She's it, the date is inscribed on the piece and it's tomorrow. <laughs> so it's uh January 9th. It, is it January 9th? I hope it is. Yeah. Today is the, <laughs> so <laughs> I, it, I need an absolute deadline. So my client work, it's just, I work to that and I work to that. Like the other day, this is another thing talking about balance. I have 
two commercial spots to do. And usually when you do a commercial spot, I don't know how you guys do it, but they usually want to see it before it goes into the vlog. Yeah. So I have to do it and I have to remember the clothes and put it so it looks like I'm, it's like all seamless. So last night I said to my agent, I said, I'll have both of those spots for review this morning. That's this morning. So yesterday at like seven o'clock, I still hadn't shot and edited either of those two pieces. And they're easy because they're only two minutes long each. But the stress I was feeling and what I keep reminding myself is by midnight or by this morning right now, they'll be done. I have a vague idea what I want to do. I've been kind of going over them in my head, what I want to say, you know, because I want them to be honest reviews. And I just have to sit down. So when I got home last night after doing the killer sign and get it all packed up, I just set up the camera and I just talked about both of these different products. And... I was able to put together two pretty decent pieces. In fact, while we were talking, my agent emailed me. He says, good work. So <laughs> those things, again, I need an absolute deadline. If I have an absolute deadline, I just hit that. And Taylor usually understands. Like She's like, what do we want to do for dinner tonight? I said, I'm making two commercials. I don't know what you could eat, whatever you want. I'm, I'm making commercials <laughs> for dinner. But after we were done, after the, the I, I edited both. Taylor's my first critic. She liked both of them. If she doesn't critique them, then I feel like I'm in a good spot. And... We went for a drive last night at 1.30, just goofing off, hanging out in the woods, driving around up here at 1.30 a.m. And so that's it. That's a ramble, but that's how I balance. As, as long as I have a good deadline, all my other stuff is loose. I don't get too much. I don't get too stressed out about my own personal videos. It's just client work. That's really important to me. Yeah. I, I You mentioned... Um you know, take relaxing a little bit more and, and putting out content when you feel it's it's good. And then Bob said something a few weeks ago of like he was going to remove that stress. Like if, if I don't have a video this week, that's fine. And that kind of like gave me the okay of like, yeah, I don't have to put out a video every single week. Except- yeah, I never made any declaration since I started my channel yeah. that I'm always going to do this. I mean, my vlogs, I used to have them out when I first started every Friday. Because I remember I'd come in and one of my students watched them every morning. And, like we'd always critique it together. <laughs> and then it started slipping. I went to Saturday. Then it went to Sunday. Then it, now it's like whenever. But yeah. I'm not stressing. In every, every week of November, every week of December, and then uh, most of the weeks in October, I had a sponsored video and that, so I had a deadline for three months straight and I, I just I was taking they were all good deals for the business so I was just taking everything that I could and because I don't this, for for me the sponsorships kind of comes in in waves and so when they come in yeah, and too. it's the right fit yeah I, I take it because I don't know what's going to happen uh, a couple months down the line and the end of the year always seems to be a little bit more. These companies seem to have a bigger budgets, so they're advertising more. And so I took everything that I could, and it was really stressing on me to force myself to put out a video every single week. And I was starting to get a little burnt out. And last week I didn't put out a video because I didn't have a sponsor, um, and that felt good. And I have one this week, so I have to put out a video. If I didn't have a um, a deadline this week, I would probably take another week off just to kind of finish things up in the shop uh, as far as some, some of the um, setting up the, the new shop. And it's I struggle with the balance. I was doing really good and I was in a good rhythm and it felt great for a long time. And then it just was like, I need a break. I really need a break because if I'm not, I'm in a, I'm in a very fortunate position where um, if I need to not work i can you know that's not everybody has that that luxury but uh uh, if i'm not putting out something that i'm not happy with that's going to show in the video and that's it's it's not good for me it's not good for for the business so i'm struggling to find that balance and i'm trying to not get burnout right now yeah i mean i think even even if you do find a good pattern that you can fit into you know that's that's comfortable that you can create things at a certain pace if you do any pattern long enough eventually you get tired because you have to i mean like we have to that's why we sleep every night right even if you have a good day's work and you're happy all day and you eat well you still have to go to sleep eventually, <laughs> you know, and I think that's good for us to like do work, get things done and then step away and take a breath and then come back to it. And that, that goes for me, that goes with family too. 
I mean, like, I love my kids. I love my wife. I love spending time with them and doing things with them. But after, you know, Christmas break of a couple of weeks of spending a whole lot of time with them, for my mental health and my, uh, for me being a good dad and a good husband, I need, I needed to go downstairs and spend some time in the shop. Just not, not because anything negative about them, but like for me to be what I needed to be, I have to step away from it. And this goes way back to like when I was doing this as a hobby, um, and I was doing software stuff, I would do software all the time. And to be good and to have stamina to continue to do write software, I had to step away from it for a little bit and do something with my hands, you know? And I think that goes for everything. So I I hope you and people other people don't see that as like a you know, something's wrong. You know, like I'm not enjoying my job a hundred percent, so something must be wrong. <laughs> I think it's really natural that for us to even if things are going great, for us to need a break and to step away from things, even if it's for a day or whatever, you know, and come back to it. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, I think, you know, not putting out a video this past week for me was that break was just, um, letting myself off the hook. And so the break was not necessarily a break from work, but it was a break from the pressure of, I put on myself to get something put out, you know? And I think that was really good for me because it let me be productive without the stress of feeling like I had to release something. Um, hmm. So, yeah, I don't know. The The stress of, um, well, not the stress, but the the stuff that comes with video sponsorship is really interesting because I think a lot of time that people that watch videos don't really realize what goes into getting that deal in place <clears throat> And then doing our part of the deal before it gets online, like Jimmy was saying, like, you know, showing them the ad, <clears throat> excuse me, showing them the ad ahead of time, getting it approved, making any changes that they have to make, that we have to make, getting it back to them, getting it approved again, and then getting it posted in time to meet a schedule. You have to work backwards from that pretty far. And that can get kind of hairy, you know, it can be a lot to think about while you're also trying to create other content in the meantime that has to be released before or after. And if you have multiple sponsorships, then those things stack up. And that's just part of the job, for sure. But now that I'm looking ahead at this next year as like, I have my salary to pay, I have somebody else's salary to pay, now I have to be a little bit more concerned about when sponsorships come in, and how I handle them, and how you know, because before, I'm kind of like you, David, it was like, I'll get a whole bunch for a couple of months, and then there'll be a couple of months that are really dry. And when it was just me, that's no big deal. I can just not spend money during those couple of months, you know, and be, <laughs> be okay. Um, but now I'm thinking, like, I have to make sure, and, I, and I've been planning to hire somebody, so I have money in reserve to be able to pay a salary, even if nothing comes in for a little while, you know, for most of this year, which is pretty awesome. Um you know, but now I have to be a lot more conscious of, like, well, is is taking a sponsorship at a little bit lower rate worthwhile next month because it gives me some income that I'm sure yeah. that I can pay him? That's, con that's, that's called balance. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's really interesting. Well, it's funny. My, it's my agent, like, we signed a deal this week, which was probably the most money I've ever signed for something. Good for me. Great for me. It's going to take a couple of things to get to that, you know, that, that finish line. But... The very same week, he emailed me something and goes, hey, is this enough? I'm like, yeah. I got to <laughs> sit in front of a camera for five minutes and tell my honest opinion? Yeah, it's it's plenty. I used to work two weeks for that much money. You know, and so <laughs> for him, it's like we did this and it's like, he's like, well, we just did that. I mean, I'm like, you know what? It's It's basically, it's all easy money. It doesn't come in all the time and it's very few and far between and very sparse, but when it comes in... You got to take it. Yeah. yeah. It, it's it's interesting. Like, I <clears throat> I don't want to be beholden. Well, I guess we're way off topic here. But I don't want to be beholden to sponsors. You know, and I don't want to, like, spend my, my time really building content around sponsorships. I've always tried to make them force the sponsors to fit into what I was already going to do anyway. But, yeah, as a business grows, you have to be able to – <clears throat> guarantee income. You have to be able to guarantee that you're going to be able to pay the people that work with you or for you or make sure that you can afford to get materials. Um, 
you know, and I've been really blessed to be able to do all that stuff long, you know, and I'm not worried about that continuing, but it's interesting how it now changes, uh, when I have to think about more than just myself and I have to, I have to balance about like what I want to do for the sake of me wanting to make a whatever to how I can make it fit, uh, with a sponsor so that I can have the income to pay the person who's helping me. You know, there's like another dimension to Mm. thinking about it, which is, that's just the way it goes, I guess. So talk about balance, and I'm going to talk about a personal experience that happened last week. You guys know because we talked a little bit behind the scenes about it. A huge part of balance is balancing your checkbook and balancing your income and balancing your budget and making sure that you have enough money to cover You know, the giant building you're building in your backyard and the, and the contractors and when the bills become due. As of now, I've been paying cash. So I was like, as long as I could spread the payments out to some of these guys, I'm okay to pay it. If they wanted one check at one time, I couldn't do it. So – Last Tuesday morning, a week ago, you, it started on my phone when I signed up for my bank account a few years ago. I, I signed online to do some banking online. Somehow I got into this thing. I, I must have accidentally clicked something where it says, you know, every single morning I wake up and the very first thing on my phone is the balance in my, my checking account, my business account. Hmm. I'm like, oh, cool. So every morning I just look at it. I'm like, cool, whatever. You know, that's what I expect. That's what I expect. That's what I expect. Every morning I wake up. It's there. I don't, you know, like I don't. I didn't. I don't. I don't know how to opt out. I don't need to opt out. Last Tuesday morning, I woke up and it says twenty seven thousand dollars. I'm like, oh, somebody gave me twenty seven thousand dollars. Why would they give me twenty seven thousand dollars? Must be a banking error. And then I'm scrolling down and it says seven thousand or six thousand dollars. I'm like, hmm, six thousand dollars. <laughs> Free money. Who gave Who gave me six thousand dollars? And then I'm like reading it and I'm like, I'm like, somebody's making a mistake. Somebody accidentally wired me money. I'm like, wait a minute, that money's being taken out of my account. I jumped out of bed, panicked, and I huh. said, I, "I'm like, I'm getting somebody's, somebody's hacking my account." I went right to the, I went right to the computer, got on the phone, started talking to people, and I was screaming and yelling. Actually, I called the Chase Fraud Department, and they can't turn your account off. You got to shut your account down. You got to shut it off. And I'm here, and my bank account's a hundred miles away. So it was a panic day, and it turns out, after all said and done, there was a lot of phone calls, a lot of panic. Turns out, my accounting firm that handles my accounting for 20 something years, they made a mistake and they withdrew a payroll from my account, not a oh different part of the time. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> oh man. I got the money back that morning we did our last podcast. It was back yeah. in my account. While we were on the podcast, I just happened to notice my phone, bling, money was taken back out. Ugh. That's why I had to get off the, the podcast to, you know, in the after show and go deal with my account. I got all the money back. But there was that small window of time where I was like, okay, how am I going to balance the next, like, okay, this is identity theft. I'm never getting this money back. I got to run down to the city right now, shut my bank account off, move whatever's left over into a new account. How am I going to balance paying the sub, dealing with this, going to get that. I got to pay this. This is due right away in my mind. I started like making, okay, I have this credit card. I can cover this. So I immediately went into panic mode, but emergency panic mode, you know, survival mode. Okay, I could do this. I could do that. This money's probably insured. I might be able to get it back, but it's not coming back right away. How am I going to cover my costs? What can I sell? I mean, I really immediately went into all these things in my mind, instant survival mode. Turns out after all said and done, there was no need to panic. It was just a clerical error, but these things can and do happen. You know, my friend once had a debit card. He went to buy gas and they said it's insufficient funds. He had like sixty, seventy thousand dollars taken out of his bank account. Oh my gosh. Identity theft. Like, and it happened within like a 12 hour period from the previous time he used this card to when he used it that other time. And, uh, That's scary. so, so it can happen. So, you know, talk about balance. Like I said, that day a week ago, I was panicked. I was really panicked. But at first I was like, Oh wow! Someone just gave me like thirty something thousand dollars. I wonder. I wonder how long it will take them to figure out this mistake. Maybe I get to keep it. <laughs> and, then I, and then I, when I double checked it, I immediately jumped out of bed like I was electrocuted and ran to the computer and started finding like. Uh, yeah, that was crazy. And it's funny. Taylor was like, she got me a coffee. She brought me a coffee while I was on the phone. It was like okay. It was like trying to fly a plane. You know, like kind of crash land a plane. That's crazy. Anyway, so thank God everything is better. But then again, like I said, you just got to – what happens What happens when, you know, identity theft strikes or, you know, God forbid, you know, some other major tragedy 
that's like a real life tragedy. Like, you know, I, I had to honestly, I had to honestly remind myself, I'm like, okay, this is just a money thing. Everyone's health is good. You got to take a step back, a breather and say, okay, this is just insurance, something or other. This will all come back to me. But in the meantime, how do I, how do I balance what's left to get everything paid? Yeah. A few weeks ago, I had something throw everything way out of balance where I was in that, I was in that good rhythm and, um, poor grandma fell, broke her leg, had to have her knee replaced and she's still in rehab. And so, um, we're trying to make sure that somebody is visiting her every single day because grandma doesn't want to be in rehab. And, um, so we're just trying to keep her entertained. And so like, uh, you know, every, every two days I find myself, I have to travel 45 minutes, go hang out with her for a few hours and not, and, um, hopefully it didn't sound that didn't come out wrong. I I, yeah. I want to go yeah. visit grandma. I want I want to hang out with her. But that's one thing that takes um, four hours out of my day, and that just threw everything way out of balance. And that was another thing that contributed to the burnout. Like of I got all the stuff that I got to do, and I have these deadlines I got to make, and I you know I have these these commitments now, and I, the unexpected things come up all the time. And so once you think you have everything figured out, some grandma falls you know yeah and i mean that's a prime example of what i was talking about about the balancing you know that stuff will come up and you just have to be ready to to pivot you know and focus on grandma for a while because she needs it and she deserves it you know yeah yeah um another balance thing uh, jimmy you got something else oh no just on that same subject you you reminded me of my own personal experience i've talked about this to the point of uh, annoyance but when i personally got injured when i injured my finger that was over seven years ago but I remember that week was a crazy week. I had a lot to do and I had, oh, it was deadlines. I mean, it was before YouTube for me, but I was like, oh, I had to finish this client job. I have to deliver that. I have to deliver that. And then boom, I was in the hospital for three days with my cutoff pinky. And everything else is like everybody I spoke to, I'm like, yeah, I'm injured. Uh, you know, unfortunately, I'm injured. And they're like, okay, no problem. When you get it ready, just let me know. Well, you know, so like here I am panicking and it's the partly the reason why I got injured is because I'm rushing and I'm trying to keep everything balanced. And then everyone's like, don't panic. It's okay. You know, obviously, just take care of your health, and I'll see you when you when you're ready to go. So, you know, we put these we put these stresses on ourselves. Is my point? Yeah, for sure. I need that stress though. At times, I need the I need the that that pressure to keep me going, to keep yeah. me motivated. So totally. That's why I said my deadlines are like you know when somebody needs an absolute deadline or and I promise something to somebody, I need to work against that. Otherwise, it's just lingers yeah <clears throat> um another like balancing thing that i've been kind of dealing with in the last couple of days or thinking about last couple of days and it's interesting that you said uh last week i think that david that you weren't gonna stop feeling bad or stop justifying yeah yeah like what tools you were why using, i do things why you do things yeah. that's what it was that's really cool and i was glad to hear you say that um <clears throat> because now this one project i'm working on i spent a couple of days, or spent the day doing 3D modeling. Three. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I opened my coffee mug right at the microphone. I'm so sorry. I thought you were doing it on purpose. Yeah. You, like, put it. I, I thought I had myself on mute. I'm sorry. <laughs> nope. Anyway, I, I 3D modeled this thing, 3D printed this thing, and I'm looking at it going, well, the next step for the other pieces, um, well, I can laser this part. That's cool. Uh, well, I could CNC the box for it, and I'm like, okay, that's a project there with 3D printing, laser, and CNC. And my immediate feeling on the inside is like, I can't do that. Why can't I do that? And so, like, I'm I'm immediately stuck with, well, do I need to always try to balance in to every project something that's because my my gut reaction would be to balance in something that's uh, accessible. So at least one part of the project would be something you could do with your hands versus three or maybe even four different digital fabrication processes in the same project. And so there's part of me that goes, well, of course, you need to do something that is hands-on making to, so it's accessible to certain people. And then another part of me is like, forget that. Like, use the tools that you have at your disposal to make the thing that you want to make. And so I don't know. You know, I think that's something that I just have to decide per project maybe, but... <clears throat> it's I'm- a conscious effort. It's I consciously think about that as well. Like this this killer sign, which you probably see the video by the time this comes out, I was going to make the cityscape by a bandsaw. I was going to cut it out on a bandsaw. 
And I looked at it and I and I, I turned to Brett. I'm like, it's five degrees in here. I could just turn the CNC thing on. It would be done in like 20 minutes. I could bandsaw it out and then I'd have to repiece it back together and worry about the temperature in the room and the glue drying. And then I just went to the CNC. And Brett goes, all right, so it'll be a whole CNC video. He goes, you'll get some hate, but whatever. People with CNC will appreciate it. Yeah. So, I mean, it is a conscious decision from time to time. If, you know, if it... If the opportunity presents itself to hand carve or do something by hand or make it more accessible, just a bandsaw or so and so, I do I do keep a conscious decision making ongoing about you know how I do stuff. But every once in a while, I just got to get the project done. Yeah, Tim Sway just put out a video a couple of days ago of him. He's learning the CNC. He's doing good. And um, it's a it's a it was a really good video. You don't have to be a CNC enthusiast to enjoy the video because he he's trying new things, uh, learning new software, and he's just kind of talking about the process of learning. And he fails uh, a couple things go wrong in the video, which is kind of cool to see. And there's the whole debate of uh, he talks about is CNC woodworking, and and he talks about it in a very intelligent way, and um, I, it was just good. So it's this. I'll, I'm going to have two picks this week. One of them is going to be Tim Sway's video on learning the CNC, and we'll put that in the in the show notes. But you know, use what you have, and I, I'm 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 sticking to that. I'm not going to. I don't have to justify why I'm doing things. And a couple other things that we I talked about for the new year was less podcasts and, um, and well, oh, there was another thing I was going to bring up. You mean um, like listening to fewer podcasts? Is that what you mean? Listening to fewer podcasts and more music, so I can kind of stay in a, in a creative realm. And I've not listened to uh, a single podcast yet. Oh, and ne- negative comments. I have not responded to one single <laughs> negative comment. Uh, I've been doing a lot of the the shadow banning. I've been, and I think I'm getting into the habit now of not responding to that negativity. And it's, I'm I'm a better creator for it i think (laughs) that's that that's a practice thing i think you know like you have to you have to get into the habit of just like when you see your gut reaction is to like oh yeah well you know to (laughs) to immediately change Mm -hmm. that reaction before you let it get too far that's gotten a little bit easier for me over this last year to not take it personally and to not be so upset about it and just like okay move on whatever be done with this guy i think it's 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 not even that I'm taking it personally. It's uh, I think it's in my nature to um, when I see those, I laugh at them and I want to be like snotty back at them yeah. just to be funny or just to respond. And that's not a good. It doesn't create a good environment for other people to chime in and and comment on the video. So um, I want to I want to be snotty. I want to I want to make that funny comment or I want to put that person in in their place and it's it's not good so and i've done a really good job in 2018 of not doing that yeah balancing good versus evil <laughs> five days in <laughs> i think my my just or like when i see a negative comment my reasoning for wanting to respond is not necessarily to be you know snotty or mean back or anything like that it's usually to like justify something like if somebody goes like oh the pocket hole guy you know or something i'll be like but pocket holes are not that bad. You know, my reasoning is want to explain and justify, like, why I use something. And so I think I have to – and I think that's a pride thing. <clears throat> so me not responding to them and ignoring those is really a practice in me keeping my pride in check and being like, I don't I don't have to justify myself and my decisions to these people, you know, right or wrong. But, like, regardless of whether they are right or wrong or I'm right or wrong – it's really about me feeling prideful and being able to stand up and be like, oh, yeah, well, I did this for a reason, and you need to know what my reasoning is, and that's not good. <laughs> so that's why I'm, I've am i been in the habit of, like, nip it in the bud, walk away from it before I try to, like, let my pride get in the way because it's just – that's not useful. But yeah. I let my fans take it over, usually. Like, feed them to the piranhas. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, in, in the past, a couple times, I've pinned those negative comments to the top so <laughs> the people would. Um, I, I'm not doing that anymore. That's, I got into this whole conversation cool. with a guy who goes, oh, you keep giving everybody hearts, but you don't give hearts to people that give you constructive criticism. <laughs> and, <laughs> Why and would you? This whole conversation went on about me giving hearts to old people that kiss my ass.
as, as he said. And I'm like, <laughs> I go, I go, okay. So I hearted every one of his negative comments. And then everybody <laughs> jumped on him and beat him up to the point where he just deleted his comment. And then he came back later and said, I love everything you do. You're the best. And I hearted it. <laughs> he did it as a sarcastic comment to be like, okay, you snapped me into line. Now I'm one of your your Kiss fans. It's that's like, funny. It's not what it's about. I mean, you've you got constructive criticism. Just don't be rude. I didn't say any of that. I just, I kind of had a snarky conversation with him, but I never was mean to him. I, my, I, I've talked about this to the point of, of uh, annoyance, but it, I just, I try never to be mean to anybody. I just try and like kind of come back at them in their, in their same tone, but never say any, like my, I used to be like, you SOB, MF or AH, everything, you know, that's me and David Welder used to like, it'd be like, pick on us. We'll, you know, you, treat me nice. I'll treat you nice. Or treat me bad. I'll treat you worse. It was that kind of thing in the comments, you know, five years ago, but now I don't do that. Cause it just, yeah, I think it I just, just looks look bad. Cause, at it. It was, yeah. cause we all have to re we represent products and, you know, services and stuff. And you don't want to in the comment section, getting yourself in trouble. No, no you know, no. you don't want people to go, who did I just hire? Some guy that's going to like <laughs> scream and yell at somebody. Yeah, I used to look at it like a comedian would look at a, a heckler right, and like exactly. try to fight back and, and and put them in their place. Um, and that's it's just there was the wrong way to look at it. And eight days into 2018, I'm doing a good job. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like I've always kind of looked at that as um, you know, I want when I when I when new people come to my channel, what kind of community do I want them to see? Do I want them to feel right. welcome and like they can comment without? fear of being destroyed by some like troll army and if i'm in there leading the charge of like you're a jerk you're saying mean things about my video and i'm going to be mean to you back then that's definitely not setting the tone that i want people to see when they come in so yeah that's a that's, good point yeah that's the balance balancing the comment section yeah and i mean it, that Seriously. doesn't mean delete everything that's a negative but if people are being like toxic or being yeah. you know they don't need to be there that's not going to help anybody else learn or you know, feel comfortable saying, uh, having a question, because a lot of them are legitimate questions, like, why didn't you do it this way? Because that's what right. they would do. And that's a legitimate question. But if if there's a toxic environment um, and they ask that question, they're going to get jumped on by nasty people. And that's not cool. So We got way Definitely. off topic, didn't we? Balance. Everything's balance. Yeah, that's true. Balancing the money, balancing the comments, balancing time management, balancing time. I said, I, I, I just wish I didn't have to sleep. I look forward to a time when <laughs> yeah. sleep is, is an option. <laughs> For real. <laughs> but, well, you guys want to know, this is this is off topic, but it reminds me of sleep. So my hands have been so beat up. Did you guys notice my knife video? I made like this prop knife. If you guys happen to see it, my hands are really beat up in the video. And like, a lot of people are commenting on my fingernails and my hands are really rough looking. The, the cold beats my hands up. I, the cold, it kills me. Like, yeah. I have like cuts that aren't healing on my hand because of the cold. Like it's killing me. Uh, every one of my fingertips hurts. And so last night I scrubbed my hands really good. I, I use like, you know, the foot pummy stone. I use that on my hands to get my hands. And then I, I slather them with like a Burt's Bees ointment. Mm -hmm. One of the salves things that kind of re re restore your hands. And then I put on rubber gloves. For like a couple of hours so that my hands are in rubber gloves with with the hand ointment on them and so last night i went to lay down just for a minute and i fell asleep until this morning so i had it on all night long which was probably like <laughs> four or five hours of sleep five or six hours of sleep and this morning i woke up with the rubber gloves on i must have looked like a, a maniac and <laughs> i took them off to to walk the, the puppy and everything anyway my hands feel great so if anybody's having hand problems put yeah. the salve rubber gloves and then go to sleep you wake up in the morning Looking Look, like a weirdo. Looking like a serial killer. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, I have a yeah. So in Ohio, we deal with the uh, the cold, and so when you run the heater all the time, it's super dry. Your hands crack and whatever. And I've been taking super glue. Anytime my fingers show any hints of cracking, I I'll, I'll super glue it shut because I don't oh, want it to good. split open. Very yeah, I good. do that. I do that quite a bit. And I just ordered it's coming today a humidifier for the shop and a humidifier for the living room too um and then a little uh um thermostat that shows the humidity because i think your your the room should be between 30 and 50 percent humidity 
and uh, right now everything is like 10% humidity and so I'm trying to get some moisture back into the house some moisture back into the shop just so I'm comfortable because when your fingers crack and that's it's pretty darn painful it hurts and it's on like five of my fingers you know across all ten of them oh, nine and a half and it is painful like I, I go to pull the uh, the uh, the the chip the memory chip out of the computer right where my pointer <laughs> finger and my thumb both have a crack yeah. every day I'm like I I also keep um, the uh, it's it's the green manly hand lotion with working hands or something yep, like that. Yeah, that's Do what you, I use. Yeah, yeah, I use that, and then also the Spurt B stuff. I have. I use both of those. Yeah. Uh, anyway, it's it's it's, it's I definitely got to upkeep. Got to balance the cracks in my fingers. Yeah, we're, we're definitely going to get some of the uh, toughen up comments. Oh yeah. What's well, you know, it's funny. I so <laughs> I put I put like a, my mother gets this stuff from work called Bactraban. It's like extremely expensive stuff. My mother gets it for free from her doctor that she works for, and that really immediately cures stuff. If anybody knows what Bactraban is, and uh, mm-hmm. it immediately cures cuts and like gets rid of infections. So I'm putting that on, and then I put a band aid. So I have band aids on the tips of like three fingers, and I can't use my iPhone. It's the most annoying thing. I'm like tapping, like trying to tap an email with my pinky because it's the only finger that's not screwed up yet. Anyway, life of a maker in the dead of cold. <laughs> <laughs> you just have to use Siri more. That's true. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. They can't understand my accent. <laughs> <laughs> All those people in my phone, they can't understand me. All of those people in your phone? <laughs> yeah. that's funny. You know, you guys know you can change the Siri accent? Yeah. Tails yes. is Australian. Yeah. <laughs> you can change it to a guy, too, or a girl. And a lot of people have the British lady because they like feeling like, I guess, like James Bond. You have Money Penny that like does your bidding. I don't know. But, hmm. well, what have you guys been watching? Anything cool? So, uh, yes. Have you guys heard of Bobby Duke Arts? Yeah. No. Um, I, I just recently discovered this channel. Uh, a few weeks ago and it is he's he does some really creative super awesome stuff uh the video that i'm going to link to he's making this floating pencil uh carving oh it's basically that. yeah it's like a, it looks like a little wooden cup and there's colored pencils flowing out of it so he does like woodworking with very basic tools combined with art and he's entertaining and it's almost uh, like a vlog style videos when he's making these things just cool creative stuff right yeah he's bobby duke he's right. he's done a lot of really cool stuff <clears throat> he did uh i'm gonna uh okay bob i was saying he, he did a uh, um the maui's hook from moana oh like right yeah. after it came out <clears throat> he did one out of i think it was all out of two by fours but it looks really cool and it was huge and it was this giant carved thing out of wood that you can easily get anyway go ahead jimmy Oh, I was going to say, uh, my, my pick of the week isn't really a pick uh, for specifically, but it's a it's a, a YouTube search. And I want to also thank everybody that uses the term Duresta Inspired. Because recently, every once in a while, I, I'll just go in and Google Duresta Inspired to see some of the newest videos that I haven't seen. A lot of times they come across my, my computer or my, my phone via text or via tweet, rather. And uh, I, a lot of them slip through the cracks. And so from time to time, a friend will say, hey, have you seen this video? It says Duresta Inspired. I just want to clear up one thing. A lot of people think that I'm annoyed by the fact that people use that and that people are using Duresta Inspire to get views. I don't care. Use my name for it. You could even just call the video Duresta, even if it has nothing to do with me, because I want my name out there. So I don't care about that. <laughs> but <laughs> if you Google search Duresta Inspired in YouTube, there's the search showed 15,000. I don't think it's 15,000 because sometimes the search brings up things that are ancillarily associated. But there's a lot of videos that say Duress Inspired by people that I would like to thank. So everybody collectively thank you, all thousands of you, who have made videos titled Duress Inspired. So there's lots of really good things up there. And, you know, people see what I make and they take it in a completely different direction. So I'm happy to be able to inspire. So take a look. Right on. Um, mine is a... Have you heard of the, the YouTube channel Vox? Sure. I'm sure you have. My, one of my students works there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, they do – occasionally they'll do some really cool music-related videos that are about like how – like they, they did one I talked about a long time ago about a Radiohead song and about how weird the timing was. And <clears throat> um, that stuff's really interesting to me. They put one out last week or a couple weeks ago 
or maybe I just saw it then, I don't know. And it's called How a Recording Studio Mishap Shaped 80s Music. And mm. it's all about gated reverb on drums. And it's not, that sounds totally boring, I, I understand. But if you're into music at all, <laughs> you'll, uh, if you watch it, you'll know exactly what it's talking about. And basically, it's talking about when people went into the studio to record drums, they used a certain type of uh, gated reverb in the wrong way, but they used it on drums, and it had a very specific 80s drum sound. That's how that sound was created. And it's just, it's like a cool piece of history when you see a couple of tracks that first started using it, and then you can listen to all 80s and even into the early 90s music, and it has that same thing, that same like sound to the drums. And they even talk about like when it started to go out of style and what the next you know, uh, mixing sound for drums became. And, and once you hear something like that, you can pick it up when you listen to music and see like, oh, well, they were using the technique that was in vogue at the time. Um, I don't know. It's pretty cool. I like stuff like that. So like, I'm interested in how people record things. And <clears throat> so it's and cool. Some of their music ones, they really get into the science of things and it's, and they do it in a, it's short and punchy. They're like five, 10 minute videos. Yeah. They're really good. And if you're going through there, go back and watch that that Radiohead one because they talk about the weird yeah. timing. And I, I, who would have thought to make a video on a, a, the timing of a Radiohead song? Yeah. But it, it, it's interesting, and in that I'm hijacking the conversation. But there was this really cool part where they talk about how the the cl- uh, the crowds are always clapping on the wrong beats, like maybe on the ones and and threes when it should have been the twos and fours or something like that. And the band would have to ignore the crowd so it didn't screw them up i don't know it's just yeah really interesting take yeah. yeah it's and that's something you would never like a band like radiohead for instance they do that thing for their own sake like it actually adds nothing to the song but you would never know that that was a thing if vox hadn't done an article on it or done a video on it because the band's not going to come out and be like oh yeah remember this song we put out 15 years ago <laughs> we did it in a weird timing just to make it difficult for ourselves you know so anyway i think that stuff cool that stuff is cool <clears throat> man <clears throat> I went running this morning and it messed my throat up. Oh, can oh, I? Man. You know, I, I want to just uh, just so I can give like a real. We could put a link in the website. A student of mine, a former student of mine, Steve Pellegrino. He had a YouTube channel up, and then I don't know why, but he he, he kind of lost track of it. And he just started a new one with an incredibly beautiful build of a knife. And if it's in my prop knife video, I have it pinned to the top. I said everyone go check out my friend Steve, but I'll send you that link. Steve Pellegrino. He he has one video up, and he's got like two hundred subscribers, and. Everybody go encourage him. He's an incredible maker. He was a great maker when he was a student of mine 10 years ago. I mean, he, he was one of those kids that just grew up with the talent. And so what he learned from me uh, was probably a very small portion of what he already knew. So uh, go check out Steve Pellegrino's channel and watch him make this incredibly beautiful knife. Apparently, that's what he does now for a living. We haven't been in touch in a couple of years. Hmm. So. Awesome. I'll have to check it out. I'll find that link. I'll send it to you right now. Cool. Um, before we run into the after show, I want to thank our Patreon supporters because they're awesome. Especially Make, Build, Modify, Michael Schubert, Works by Solo, Malta Make, Corey Ward, Evan and Caitlin, and Wise Old Dow. They're our top supporters. But looking at the list, there's a huge list of people that support us on Patreon, and that is fantastic. We really appreciate it. Um, if you, thank you, thank you. If you want to help out the show so we don't have to get sponsors, because we don't, uh, go to patreon.com slash making it and any support level there even a dollar gets you the after show which is just more of us talking <laughs> so if that's interesting <laughs> I know I know I really sell that but if that's interesting at all go for it and just oh, hey guys you know to, well I was going to say just so you know yeah. that's an RSS feed so like it, once you get that feed from the Patreon thing you can listen to it in your your page your uh podcast player just like the normal show so jimmy go oh i'm gonna be on this old house ask this old house this week my appearance that i taped in in august will be on ask this old house starting january 11th so for the week it'll be aired on ask this old house and because it's a pbs station and all their various affiliates it's not always going to be on one specific day and time so starting the 11th it will begin to play all around the united states in various uh Various time zones and various days and times on Ask This Old House. So that's awesome. Go check it out. 
It was fun. We and you know they, they've been so good to me. I, I I have to thank them. I don't know if anybody's listening or if Heath is listening. He's one of the producers. I they've been they're like a dream to work with because you suggest something and they go, oh, that's a really good idea. Let's think about it. Or you say, hey, wouldn't you guys want to? What do you guys think? They're like, hey, that's great. Let's think about it. Whereas any other TV experience I've ever had in my life, which has been about seven of them. You email and it just goes nowhere. Nobody answers you back because nobody wants to be the one responsible for babying your idea. And they're just ideas. They're not necessarily, I'm not handing somebody a baby and saying, make sure this baby doesn't die. I'm saying, <laughs> hey, what do you think about this? They go, hey, that's cool. Let's consider it. So simply by acknowledging my thoughts and concepts, that's all I need. But any other TV experience I've ever had, you suggest ideas and they go, uh, okay, let's, um, Okay, because they don't want to like hook on. They don't want you to feel hooked. So they like so yeah. weird about it. Anyway, so they've been great. And they've been promoting my logo. They emailed me. They're like, hey, can you send us a PDF of your logo? If that's okay, we're going to use it in the promos. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> Thank you. Please. <laughs> yes, do it. Yeah. And there's a promo going around. Where, like I showed them. I go, look, sometimes I throw my logo on the floor and it makes a clanking sound because I have this one cut and quarter inch steel. And they did like 20 takes of dropping it in front of a slow-mo camera to get the right one that lands the right way. And they've been using that to like, guess who's coming to town and they drop in my logo in a slow-mo with their promo. So I, I, I can't thank them enough. I mean, it's been such a wonderful experience working with those guys. So hopefully we get to work together more often. Yeah, that's awesome. I can't, I hope I get to see that. <clears throat> I don't, excuse me. I don't watch TV oh. very often, but hopefully it'll be online or something. Oh no, th- th- it'll be online. But this is another thing. So they cut the whole segment with me and Kevin, which is in that pacing, which is obviously very in real time, slow. But as a joke, they cut the whole segment in my style. Super fast. (laughs) People giggle. (laughs) (laughs) And they go, oh, we hope you don't mind. We took a swing at your style. Would it be okay? I'm like, oh, my God, I could hug these guys. They're great. They're so great. So that's going to be on their channel, I think, starting tomorrow or the next day. So there'll be a a fast version of our segment in like a five minute edit. So that's pretty great. Thank you. Ask this old house, Heath, Kevin, Sarah. Thank you. My, I got a text from my brother two days ago and this is the exact text. Uh, all caps. Jimmy Duresta is going to be asked on ask this old house. That is some cool stuff, but he didn't use the word stuff. <laughs> mark. So yeah, my brother's excited. I didn't, oh, e- didn't even know he, th- I didn't even know if he knew who you were. So <laughs> that's cool. Well, thank you, brother. That's awesome. All right. You guys got anything else? That's it. That's I, it. I got other things, but I'm going to save it for the after show. Ooh, secret after show stuff. Right on. Thanks for listening, everybody. Okay. <laughs> we'll come up with some secret things. All right. I love this All old right. house. Thank Aww. you guys. Aww. See you guys next week. <laughs>